Salesforce security and identity. When should you use single sign-on? When should you use OAuth? Welcome to another video in the security and identity series. There are terms single sign-on and OAuth, and it's hard to know when to use them. In today's session, we're going to walk through under what situations would you have standard login, single sign-on, or OAuth and how it's used. So let's look at this diagram and consider a few scenarios. So on the left, if there is a person, a human, using a browser and their intent is to go to Salesforce and bring up Salesforce pages, then they're going to be going through direct login and serving up Salesforce pages. They either can do a direct login into Salesforce or if they have a um, separate third-party identity provider, we could be doing single sign-on, which gives them the ability to log into one system on their browser, switch over to Salesforce, and not have the friction of having to authenticate again. So the key element is this is a person using a browser and then accessing Salesforce native pages. Now we're going to go over some alternative scenarios, which would be a person is holding a mobile device. Now in the first scenario, they're using a browser. They could be using the browser and the computer, the phone, the tablet. It's still using browser technology. In the second row scenario, we're talking about a human using a mobile app, which is then going to be accessing Salesforce through the API, not rendering the native Salesforce pages, but accessing the data through the API interface. In this case, we are switching to a different mechanism called OAuth, and this is going to be a way, and we'll be going into that in subsequent videos. And this is how we're going to talk about how through OAuth, the mobile device app can access Salesforce. Um, and on the right side, there's a the, the new recommended protocol is called Web Server with PKCE. We'll be going over that in detail in a subsequent video. So that's scenario two: human. Whole, you know, having a mobile device app, accessing Salesforce using the API. In the third scenario, we would have a human using a browser, talking to a third party web server. And then they would want that third party web server to access Salesforce for them. Examples would be the Workbench app people use commonly you could even register a number of systems where you want a system set to be able to reach into Salesforce. It could be, you know, email plugins. It could be a number of variety of systems where the human is going to the browser, going to a third party server, but they want that third party server to reach in and access their Salesforce data on their behalf. In this case, we are still, we are talking about OAuth. And the new flow is the web server with PKCE, which we'll be going into into detail in a subsequent video. So in these three scenarios, the interaction is initiated and controlled by a human, uh, the human person going to a browser direct, going to their mobile device direct, going to a third party website and going. So it all begins with the human. In this diagram, we're going to be talking about separate processes. So we're going to be talking about a client process. And when I say client, I don't mean a human. I mean a, a, a process running called a, in, in the terminology of a client server. And in this case, we're going to have a client process that is going to access Salesforce using a integration user account. This is a defined account meant to be used to grant access to a, a, a computer-based client. So there will be client, there is a client, client credentials flow, and then there is the deprecated username and password flow for OAuth. So this is a single designated integration user for the client. This could be typically like a MuleSoft server reaching in or any number of external processes that are reaching into Salesforce 
maybe doing batch loads, batch exports, all operating with an integration user account. Now next flow is we have a client processing process accessing the API as a des selected person user. So this is a case where the human's not around, may not directly involved, and we want the client process to read and write files using the security context of those files. So in the case of the first row, if a record was created or updated, it would be represented as the integration user making the change. But on the second row, we want um, the client process to kind of impersonate a particular user. So we're gonna designate a person user and the, the client process will operate through the API as that user. And there are a couple of different ways that the flows that support this. There's the JWT flow, the SAML bearer assertion flow, or the SAML bearer assertion flow and the SAML assertion flow. So these are the flows that allow a client process to operate on behalf of a particular client, particular user, person, user. Now, the third flow down is where we have a device and the device is gonna to try to be connecting to Salesforce and it needs a human involved to continue the process. So it starts with the device, the device will start requesting and then a person user, a human gets involved and will approve it. Common scenario for this would be people who are using like a, a smart TV with Netflix or some other application where it pops something up on the screen and then the person user will then approve it, type in a code and approve it. So this, and that allows the device to continue to operate as the person. The key element here is this is starting with the device, the device starts the process, and then the person user is involved to approve it. Now there's another flow, it's called asset devices. You might have assets in your Salesforce org and think of them as like IoT devices, Internet of Things. And there may be scenarios where we want them to connect up to Salesforce and read data or write data. And this is an OAuth flow called Asset Flow. And you know we'll be discussing that in subsequent videos. So looking at this, there is a client process. There is a person, you, human, and then there are integration user accounts where we want where all the changes are going to be coming as a single, or we have um, des the designated person user accounts. So to recap, if you're a if you have a human using the browser trying to access Salesforce direct login, if you have an IDP identity service, you could do single sign-on, and that gets them direct access using their browser into Salesforce. If you have indirect methods, indirect going through a mobile device, indirect going through a third-party website, indirect coming from another server trying to act on your behalf, or indirect for another server just acting as an integration user with a, a nightly load, a nightly extract, any kind of automated processes, then you may have, you'll be using OAuth. And in, then you'll have to decide Am I using OAuth on behalf of a human user account or am I using OAuth using an integration user, a, a standard user account? So that's kind of the two decision makers. Is it going to be, uh, am I designating a human per, a person or am I using an integration user? And so this is going to help us make decisions on which OAuth flows to use under what scenarios. In subsequent videos, we're gonna dive deep into each of these scenarios and work through the use cases. I hope this was helpful and thank you for digging into awesome OAuth. S subscribe for more videos. There are plenty more coming. And at Steve Tech Arc and www.stevetecharc.com. And see you again soon. Same bat time, same bat channel. Thank you.